be speaking on diagnostic workup and management of portal sinus order vascular disorder. So I will be covering this topic under the limitation of NCPH term, definition of PSVD, epidemiology, pathophysiology, specific and non-specific signs, imaging signs, management algorithm, and conclusion and future perspectives. So let's go back to history. In 1962, Professor Raman Indusami studied the patients with splenomegaly and non-cirrhosis and patients with non-cirrhosis of liver. Later on, Wickelson in 1965 coined the term hepatoportal sclerosis. Later on, Boyer in 1967 coined the term idiopathic portal hypertension. And 1969, ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research, coined the term NCPF, which was continuing in love. In 1979, pathological term obliterative portal venopathy was also coined. And in 2017, well, that is vascular liver disease network, uh, vascular liver disease interest group, they coined the term PSVD. So they said the limitation of NCPH term was they excluded the patient without portal hypertension and those who were in early stage of the disease. Also they excluded the patient who had fatty liver disease, ALD, autoimmune, viral hepatitis, which can coexist with non-serotic portal hypertension. So why did they come, term, why they coined the term PSVD because the alteration has been found in the portal vein and the sinusoids. That's why portosinusoidal vascular disease. So it the elements and portal sinusoidal vascular disease includes the patients with portal hypertension and NCPF. Also, the patients who doesn't have portal hypertension and they have biopsy proven features of uh, NCPH, they, uh, these were the diagnostic gap, that's why this term was included. Also they have included patients with chronic liver disease, viral hepatitis, MAFLD, ALD, patients with portal vein thrombosis. So again, this, uh, this circle was already, we have the non serotic portal hypertension, but this group of patients who has been proven by histology in form of obliterative portal venopathy nodular regenerative hyperplasia, non serotic portal fibrosis, hepatoportal sclerosis or incomplete septal cirrhosis. This term has included both of these. But uh, the merit of this uh, term is also the demerit. It is too simplistic, too simplistic, not accurate enough to characterize a complex condition and research bias would also occur as this is an umbrella of different disease clubbed in one. If we go back to epidemiology, in NCPH, earlier before 2000, the frequency of PHPV or NCPF were like 40% in Chandigarh group, 20% in New Delhi group and later on till 2005, it decreased to 9% or 6.5% and currently 5%. So if we come to pathophysiology, so there are three different hypotheses. First is unifying hypothesis. Termed by, uh, coined by Professor Sari. So it says the patient who has major, uh, major thrombus in the early neonatal period, they tend to develop EHPVO involving the major portal vein, main portal vein. And those patients who has, uh, later on they develop, uh, they involve the small and medium sized portal vein, they develop NCPF or IPH. Second theory, dual theory, coined by Shooten, it shows uh, that patient, they have a dual hypothesis that involvement of the small and medium sized portal vein as well as increased splenic blood flow give rise to NCPF. Third theory, endothelial mesenchymal transition theory which uh, says that patient, uh, the, the portal venues, there is the endothelial cells and there is a transformation to myofibroblast which leads to uh, type 1 collagen uh, deposition and formation of obliterative portal venopathy and hence NCPF. So this term requires that biopsy proven exclusion of cirrhosis along with it one specific sign of portal hypertension or one specific histological sign of portal hypertension or non-specific sign along with histological non-specific sign. So what are the specific signs? Specific signs of portal hypertension include presence of viruses in the form of esophageal, ectopic or gastric viruses, presence of portal hypertensive bleeding, portosystemic collaterals. Histological signs include obliterative portal venopathy, 
which is just thickening of the portal ring and thereby occlusion of the lumen of the portal ring, formation of nodular regenerative hyperplasia, incomplete septal cirrhosis. So, coming to present, clinical presentation, the age of presentation differs in the different uh, patient group, the like EHPVO they have second group, second decade, third decade and NCPF and IPH in the Japanese group they have fourth decade. 20 to 44 percent tolerate, uh, they have well tolerated varicell bleeding, transient ascites and hepatic encephalopathy can be seen but that is uh, that resolves up to 25 percent patients. Splenomegaly can be seen in 70 to 90 percent patients and pain is there because of the perisplenitis or splenic infarction. PVT develops in 30 to 40 percent patients. Coming to lab work, in they have, they have anemia, it can be microcytic hypochromic due to GI blood loss or normocytic normochromic due to hypersplenism. They have pancytopenia, although bone marrow is hypercellular. They have subtle changes in the biochemical test, more or less normal. So we require biopsy. Biopsy should be more than 20 mm length and it should have at least 10 portal tract. Normally portal tract can have one, usually have one portal vein branch, but it can have one to two bile duct or one to two hepatic arterial branch. Also normally portal tract can have missing one of the three components. So having two or three portal tract in a biopsy would mislead to a diagnosis or a spurious diagnosis. So this is a normal portal tract. It has a portal vein lined by endothelial cells and it, it has a hepatic artery and bile duct. In case of obliterative portal venopathy, there is a thrombus formation in the portal vein in the lumen and uh, there is a collagen formation. If you see closely, there is a small nodule that is called nodular regenerative hyperplasia. It has hypertrophic hepatocytes in the center and atrophic hepatocytes in the periphery. This is a reticulant strain. It shows that atrophic hepatocytes has been to the periphery and uh, hypertrophic hepatocytes in the center. These are the specific signs. Another specific sign is incomplete septal fibrosis. Though the fib so this shows fibrosis is not extending enough. It, there is a dead end of the uh, fibrous plates. So coming to non-specific signs of portal hypertension, they can they are ascites, low platelet count, screen size more than 13 cm. And non-specific histological signs include portal tract abnormalities in the form of multiplication, increased number, architectural disturbance, non-zonal sinusoidal dilatation or mild perisinusoidal fibrosis. So this is a sinusoidal congestion, red. This is a herniation of the portal vein, abnormalities in the portal vein into the uh, extending from the periportal tract. This is a duplication of the portal vein and the bile ducts and also it shows there is a bile duct, multiple bile ducts and the multiple port small portal veins are visible along with the large main portal vein. So these portal tract abnormalities are non-specific signs of portosinusoidal hypertension. So what are the conditions associated with PSVD? There can be infections, repeated GI infection which leads to portal pyemia and thrombophilipitis in the portal vein leading to thrombosis. It can be drug induced earlier AR, uh, ART. In HIV patients has been uh, documented to cause uh, PSVD drug induced. Genetic causes can be there. Prothrombotic conditions like protein C, S deficiency, factor 2, anti phospholipid syndrome, ADMT 13 deficiency has been seen. There are immunological causes. CVID is the most common immunological cause precipitating to PSVD. And there are some blood uh, disorders like aplastic anemia, myeloproliferative disorders. Conditions that are excluded from the PSVD include history of bone marrow transplantation, bird cherry syndrome, hepatic cystosomiasis, cardiac failure, Abernathy syndrome, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, chronic cholesterol disease, sarcoidosis, or any infiltrative liver diseases. So coming to non-invasive test, HEPG, LSM, SSM in PSVD. So this is our study. I will be a study of 173 patients. What they have done is they have categorized the histological, uh, histological spectrum and in the form of obliterative portal venopathy, OPV fibrosis, incomplete septal cirrhosis, NRH, mega sinusoid with fibrosis and unclassified, and they have followed them. Followed them. They showed that patient who has OPV with fibrosis, obliterative portal venopathy with fibrosis and incomplete septal cirrhosis, 
they have slightly higher HPV that is more than 10 as compared to other main only OPV, NRH, MSF or unclassified they have lower HPG. So why HPG is lower in PSVD? Because they have large venovenous communication. Communication can be smaller or it can be as large as this shunt. So coming to LSM in PSVD, and this study, same study shows that patient with NRH and MSF has slightly higher LSM of more than 10. But it was spurious because they confirmed it with the quantity of fibrosis. In quantity of fibrosis assessment, assessment they showed that only OPV and ISC patient has higher fibrosis while NRH and MSF which was earlier seen was not there. Also they have done pro-collagen test and pro-collagen test was also higher in OPV and ISC but it was normal in NRH and MSF. They have uh, looked at short term uh, course also complication and they showed that ascites was seen in OPV and ISC patients as compared to other patients of incomplete septal cirrhosis, NRH and unclassified. So what is the LSM and FSM ratio? So this study in CGH, it showed that FSM or LSM ratio more than 1.23 had 91% sensitivity and 85% specificity with ROC of 0.93 for diagnosis of NCPH. Combinedly, if we use both of these, then ratio 1.23 and LSM of less than 4.7 has sensitivity of up to 97.6 and 100% specificity. They have just excluded one patient who did not uh, uh, came into this combined algorithm. So this is uh, our IBS study, another study from Dr. Hitesh. He uh, did screening stiffness in patients who were bleeder and esophageal, had esophageal viruses, they had higher spleen stiffness of 91 as compared to non-bleeder in the same non-serotic portal hypertension group. In case of gastric virics, the spleen stiffness was 89 as compared to 66 in gastric virics in NCPH only. When they compared with the cirrhosis and non-serotic bleeder, they found that non-serotic portal hypertension bleeder has a higher spleen stiffness of 90 as compared to 79 in cirrhosis bleeder. So what are the imaging in PSVD? It includes intrahepatic portal vein, portal tract abnormalities, FNH like lesion, peri uh, peripheral parenchymal atrophy and uh, periportal hyperintensity. So what are these? So we see in this first uh, A, these are FNH like lesion circular and this is also MRI with uh, showing Periportal hyperintensity along with FNH like lesion in PSVD. There are multiple FNH like lesions. Also, they have other like uh, main portal vein thrombosis, right portal vein thrombosis, and there is a huge large caudate lobe hypertrophy as seen in these. These are the main, uh, main signs of PSVD. So, they have calculated a PSVD radiology score along uh, including all these abnormalities and they took intrahepatic portal tract abnormalities, abnormal liver morphology, atrophy of segment 4, FNH like lesion and periportal hyperintensity along with nodular liver surface. They concluded PSVD had a median score of 2 and cirrhosis had a median score of minus 1. So atrophy of segment 4 and nodular liver surface, they were more in the cirrhosis and intrahepatic portal tract abnormalities, abnormal liver morphology, Periportal hyperintensity or FNH like lesions, they were more in favor of PSVD. There is a recent meta analysis, also systematic review, and it in included 12 studies. They showed elastography and cross sectional imaging can help differentiate from uh, cirrhosis to PSVD. In PSVD, there was a low liver stiffness, high spleen stiffness, and ratio of spleen to liver stiffness was higher 1.23. In cirrhosis, however, there was higher liver stiffness, stiffness, lower spleen stiffness as compared to PSVD and ratio was also lower. So what are the metabolomes in PSVD? This was a Garcia Pagan study and uh, they included 37 patients and they found anti-endothelial cell antibody which is against the liver sinusoidal anti uh, endothelial cell, the lining of the endothelial. They found that it was positive in 38% patients. And the positive predictive value was 63% with negative predictive value of 71%. So 
so coming to management babino 7 says endoscopic screening for gastroesophageal viruses is required for diagnosis of psvd management of, of portal hypertension in psvd is similar as the cirrhosis although they have said that the limited studies are available but we have shown that uh, secondary prophylaxis of varicel bleed in patient of non cirrhotic portal hypertension the rate of recurrence of bleeding was similar between the uh, propranolol group and the tbl group they have shown that there is no recommendation can be made regarding the anticoagulation therapy to prevent the development of pvt pvt in psvd in patients developing pvt anticoagulation therapy should be started according to recommendation for non cirrhotic pvt so psvd for specifically they have uh, not said <coughs> also babino 7 said tips can be considered to treat severe complication of portal hypertension liver transplantation is an option in selected patient with psvd so what are the studies and tips in ncpf and psvd so this study of 41 patients it was a multi center study or three centers were included spain french and switzerland and uh, they have taken varicel bleeding Uh, 61 patients and uh, refractory ascites 39% patient and 24 patient were uh, were preemptive and they found that varicel rebleeding decreased to 28% and 6% uh, and 33% patient has only ascites recurrence so it's only 6 patients another study from regnault it was a french group study and uh, they took 25 patients and uh, varicel rebleeding prophylaxis was Uh, indication in 14 and uh, ascites was in 5 and uh, combined varicel rebleeding and uh, ascites was in 5 and they showed the rebleeding was present in only 4% and ascites persistent was in only 12% another chinese study uh, they showed varicel they took 76 patients and uh, included varicel rebleeding in 66 and emergency tips in 10 and they showed 33% success rate of varicel rebleeding and as i said persistence was only 12% coming to surgery in ncpf this is a gb pan study which included 252 ncpf patients and 64 had clinic symptomatic hypersemism uh, 70% has uh, hypersemism which was symptomatic and on follow up after surgery none had developed hepatic enterocolitis four had developed varicel rebleeding patient with severe hypersemism and pancytopenia had a longer duration of symptoms and a higher incidence of varicel rebleeding and post operative morbidity what are the outcomes of liver transplant in psvd this is only single study uh, headed by dr garse pada was a another multi center study of 79 patients only which mean with mean follow up of 37 months and they showed post ct survival was 82% 80% 68% in 1 2 and 5 years 24 patient died they showed uh, pre lt bilirubin of more than 2 and creatinine of 1.13 were associated with poor uh, outcomes in patient transplanted for uh, psvd so i conclude biopsy is must for must with presence of specific and non specific clinical signs lab abnormalities in psvd are subtle predominantly related to hyperspinism lsm and hcpg is low while ssm is higher ratio of ssm and lsm can be taken more than 1.23 for diagnosing ncph management of portal hypertension is same as in cirrhosis carefully selected patient should be evaluated for tips or surgery and lt has a comparable outcome in psvd let's go to future perspective so we do not have any data of natural history of psvd without portal hypertension which was a major diagnostic gap and turning the psvd term also we need further studies and long term duration studies which should include pathological proof pathological or uh, histologically proven of opv nrh or is isr with severity of portal hypertension and outcome in future we have enough data on ncph but we do not have enough data on histology of nrh isr isf or opv also we have to develop improve non invasive methods to screen for psvd cross sectional imaging and ssm and evaluate the incidence and predictor of development of portal vein thrombosis in patients with psvd and assess the efficacy of anticoagulation as uh, babino 7 doesn't recommend as they have 
they don't have enough data. So algorithm for diagnosing PSVD is if, if you have a patient of suspected PSVD with altered liver test and no other causes and no other liver disease identified, look for prothrombotic cause and any other cause which can precipitate PSVD, hematological cause, autoimmune disorder, exposure to older HIV drugs, azathioprine blood disorders. If there is no sign of portal hypertension, you can go directly or to liver biopsy and see for the criteria of PSVD. If the criteria are fulfilled, then you can label them PSVD. It is a histological diagnosis. If there are signs of portal hypertension, endoscopy and treatment of viruses are needed. Liver and spleen stiffen liver elastography are needed. If, they, if the patient has low LSM, high or low SSM, then suspicion of PSVD is created and again you have to go for the biopsy. The biopsy is needed if you have a suspicion. If you have a high LSM and SSM, then this, this is a patient of advanced liver fibrosis and cirrhosis. You have to treat him like cirrhosis. So PSVD is a more of pathological term. It has been clubbed and uh, it has included all the pathological uh, OPV, NRH, ISF into one. But it does not give insight into the clinical outcomes, future course. Thank you.